Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on differential equations. This is video number 3 for chapter 3. In, in this video, we'll go through a couple more examples with uh, two real distinct roots. Okay, let's get started. So the first example is this one. We have this equation, y double prime minus 4y equals 0. Two parts of the work we have to do. Part A, find the general solution. Part B, we will now give the initial condition. Y0 is 1, Y prime is 0 is A. And then the question asks that for what values of A would the solution Y remain bounded as time goes to infinity? Okay, let's solve this. So part A, for the general solution, we know that um, we will need to set up the characteristic equation and find the roots. So y double prime gives me r square, negative 4y gives me negative 4. So I solve this, I found two roots. One is negative 2, one is 2. So two real and distinct roots. It's okay, so we can write up the general solution. c1 times e to the r1t and c2 times e to the r2t. I'm putting the value for r1 and r2. And here c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants, um, which would be determined with the initial conditions. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> There are various ways of uh, dealing with part B. Let me present one way. So let's read. So and the question asks you to find a possible initial condition for y prime at 0 such that the solution in the end will remain bounded. So y as a function t remains bounded as t goes to infinity. Then let's look at the general solution. In general, if both of these terms are present, this term goes to zero, and this term goes to infinity, and this will not hold. And if you want yt to be bounded as time goes to infinity, then this term must not be there. And therefore, c2 must be zero. So this means this in the general solution with this constraint here, the boundedness, will be that yt is a constant c1 times e to the negative 2t. So only one term, that term must be 0. Okay, so let's find the value c1 using um, one of the conditions, that is um, y0 is 1. So we put it in y0 is 1. So this is 1, and I simply get c1, so that shall be 1. Okay, so the solution must be yt equals to e to the negative 2t. But now the question is asking you to identify the a value. And what is a? Well, a is y prime at 0. But then this can easily be computed once we know y0, right? So let's compute y prime of t, you take derivative of that, you get a negative 2 in the front. Then you use this to compute the value, to actually find the value a, which is y prime of 0. So put t equals 0, we find out that a must be negative 2. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, um, this is just one way of solving this part of the problem. It kind of goes uh, forward and inverse back. Might be a bit tricky for us to think about it. Um, there is another way, probably more straightforward, let me mention there. That is, okay, so after you have obtained the general solution, then you would use these um, initial conditions to find the constant C1 and C2. So you plug in Y0 equals 1, which will give you c1 plus c2 equals 1, and then you compute y prime, take a derivative of that, 
and then set it to be zero and set this to be a. So you have two equations and you can solve it um, to find the value for c1 and c2. Okay, And in these expressions, a would occur. Once you have that, then you argue that if y shall remain bounded, then the c2 must be zero, which will be a term involving a. So set that term equals zero, and you can solve for a, and you will get the same result. Okay, so I encourage you to go through that and carry out the calculation and verify that you also get the same solution. Our next example is um, this equation. So we have 2y double prime plus 3y prime equals 0. So there is the lack of the term involving y. So in order to find the general solution, we set up the characteristic equation. So we get 2 times r squared plus 3 times r equals 0. And you factorize it, taking out the r, and you find two roots. r1 is negative, 3 over 2, r2 is 0. So these are still two real and distinct roots. And the, the new um, aspect here is that one of the root is 0. And it will give you a little bit different expression for the solution. Let's see. Okay, so let's put in the formula for the general solution. C1 um, e to the r1t plus c2 e to the r2t. So here the term involving r2 is in red because we see that e to the r2t is e to the 0, which is 1. So this is the general solution. So um, we have one term in the general solution, which is just constant, coming from e to the power 0. OK, so in this solution, um, we can see that asymptotic behavior, as t goes to plus infinity, we see that this term goes to 0. So the solution will approach C2, the constant, asymptotically. OK, just to um, put a strong remark, pay attention. So if one of the root is 0, then the constant is also a solution. OK, so don't be scared of a constant in the solution. That just means that one of the real root is 0 in the characteristic equation. OK, so this is our final example. Um, it says that find a second order equation such that this function here is its general solution. So this function is c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the negative t. This is a, a type of kind of an inverse kind of a question. I know how the solution behaves. Could you guess what kind of an um, equation could have generated this solution? OK, so we just need to um, think backwards. Um, if this is the general solution, looking at it, we see that we have two roots for the characteristic equation. r1 shall be 3, and r2 is negative 1, which we stated here. Now let's use this information to find the characteristic equation. So what kind of a quadratic polynomial will have these two as its root? So the simple way could be just write it in the factorized form r minus r1 times r minus r2, which is here with the values plugged in, and then equals 0. And also, you can multiply this equation on the left-hand side by any non-zero constant, which will also be the end equation of, of the characteristic equation. But that's the same. You can eventually drop the constant. So let's take this form. OK, now let's um, distribute this and write out 
and we get this as our um, characteristic equation. Now we need to go back from the characteristic equation back to the differential equation. So we remember um, if we were given a differential equation, how did we form the characteristic equation? Well, wherever we have y double prime, we put in r square, and wherever we have um, y prime, we put an r, and uh, whenever we have a constant 1, we put in y. Then we can go backwards. Wherever we have r square, we put in y double prime. And wherever we have r, we put y prime. And this is 3 times 1, so wherever we have this constant 1, we put in y, and we get this equation. Okay, and uh, if you are not convinced, um, then one can um, calculate starting from this equation and try to find its uh, general solution. Then you will have this as the characteristic equation, and then it can be factorized like that. And you have two roots, and you would form a general solution, which is exactly this one. Okay, so we're just going backward in that procedure. A final note is that um, if you multiply the left-hand side of this equation by any constant, it's just the same equation, so it's a redundant one, another form of writing the same thing. Okay, okay I hope this is not too much um, a twist of your mind, and I uh, hope this is all clear, and that you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time.